you told me off camera that uh, after this master you're not going to go straight into a PhD. Yes, that's correct. So basically, um, I decided that I would love to try out also working in the industry, getting that experience. And also if I'm later planning on staying in academia long term, it would also just be nice to kind of like take a break and get a different experience before that. So basically, um, I have had three internships in industry so far. Um, one of them was in software engineering after my first year and after second and third year, I have done internships in quantitative finance and trading in two different companies. And I decided to take up um, an offer from one of those companies and um, go into a quantitative finance um, job for a bit after um, I graduate with my master's. So I'm moving to Amsterdam in half a year where I will start a job in quantitative trading. That's kind of like the nerdy part of finance. I think it's the cool part of finance where it's not about um, meet, uh, having endless PowerPoint meetings and um, so on, but more like um, people coming to work in a t-shirt and jeans and working with numbers and like creating models, modeling like behaviors in financial markets and so on. It's kind of like um, very focused on modeling, machine learning, data science and so on. And that's what I find cool that we can apply these concepts to real world um, applications like yeah, financial markets. So I really enjoyed the internship. I thought it was like fast paced, but also quite challenging because um, there are a lot of companies who are competing with each other to have the best models. So I found it exciting and I decided to go back. Currently I have um, a contract signed for one year after I graduate and then I will see whether I want to stay there for some more years um, and maybe do a PhD when, I don't sure, know, I'm 30. Up enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Um, or if I realize that I really miss research, then I might just go into a PhD after one year already. I will see. Um, basically, I just want to get that experience and then I will decide um, what I'm going to do next after that one year. Would there be scope for being for doing research within the company, research on quantitative finance, mm. making the better model than the other people don't have and so on and so on? There definitely is that scope. Um, there are a lot of people who are employ this quantitative researchers and literally just work on improving the models. Usually the research like that can't really be published because it's the edge that the company has and at least it's not published for a few years as long as they're using those models. So it's more kind of like secretive in that sense. You can't tell the entire scientific community what you're working on. But um, it's also cool because the research you do there, can you can see its impacts immediately because as soon as you do enough testing to confirm that it probably works it can be put into production and like a couple of weeks later you can already see the returns whether um, the model was doing well and whether it's earning the company some money so i think that it's there are different motivations but what i like about this part of research is that yeah you can see the results you can see something soon. tangible coming out yes. of it yes Yes, that's very, very rewarding to see that it's mm. not just all <laughs> imagined. <laughs> not yeah. just ideas, but... So I, I have quite a few of my students who've gone into um, places like you describe, mm. and, and some even to the exact same place. <laughs> <laughs> and um, do you have any sense whether it's just doing cool stuff at the computer in the daytime and then just going off and doing something else or when when they go back home then they do their own trading and things and from, from all the stuff mm -hmm. that I now understand I'm going to put my own bets on this company which is going to do one well to be fair my, I, as far as I know most people who work in these finance companies don't really do like a lot of day trading first of all because when you work in such an advanced company you know uh, like in a company with such advanced algorithms you know that whatever you implement at home will probably not beat the so many companies that have workers who have worked full time on that for a while. And of course, like 
the models you implement at work, they use some infrastructure and some ideas that you just can't bring back home. And it's not like it just tells you the best company and then you um, bet on that. So um, first of all, trading at home, you're probably never going to be as good. And second of all, if you gain some insights into what company is the best by doing your work, then it's actually in some cases even illegal to then um, bet your personal finances on that. So um, I think that most people I've met in the finance sector actually just invest in something um, that's not like very risky and um, is also something that they can hold long term, like, um, like S&P 500, 500 <laughs> or um, US or government choice, bonds yes. or something, something safe and something you don't need to trade every day. So you can just forget about it um, because betting on small companies takes a lot of time and is often much more risky. So I, I think that I also will have that perspective that um, with my personal finances, I will rather just play it safe. And um, there's also like the companies have enough capital that they can do some more risky things. And if it fails, it's still just a small fraction of the capital of the entire company. But with personal finances, um, you need to be really careful not to gamble too much of your money away. Sounds like a very wise strategy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, people who have seen the inside of these companies are quick to point out that if you if you try to compete against them as an individual, then you'd always lose. Yeah, yeah. Yes. They just have like so yeah. much data, such good low latency devices, um, complex models. It's like basically impossible to like implement something like that with your own infrastructure yes, and clearly trying things. to compete head yeah head on with, with that would be i would uh, not advise would that. <laughs> uh, I, i'm sure that people who get into that are nerdy enough about finance that they will want to do something with their money other than just leaving it in a savings account mm. and so they will they will you know trade ideas over the uh of the water cooler on you know yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway. i think it's like sometimes cool to invest in a company if you think that they have a really cool idea and um are doing something novel and are likely to be successful but whenever it comes to such risky investments because as long as soon as like as long as something is a startup it's going to be risky to some extent i think that like it should always be money that you're willing to lose Absolutely. it should never be yes. a, a significant proportion of yes, um, yes. your um yeah of your finances. I, I i subscribe to that philosophy <laughs> don't don't leave the money in the savings account because otherwise inflation needs it yeah yeah stick it in the s&p 500 or exactly some, some index fund. and then the... if you want to have a little slice of you know i think i have a hunch about this startup then make it something that exactly as you said it's money you can afford to lose yeah then if it works well great if it doesn't mm -hmm. too bad but yeah exactly. you still have your savings <laughs> <Yeah. side. laughs> yes very good um and as I was saying earlier, if if you do a, a few years in in that kind of place, then surely the salary will be enough to pay for your PhD later. Exactly, that's also um, what I was thinking. That a lot of PhD students um, need to really watch out um, their fi uh, like their spending and so on because um, the PhD stipends are just not that high. And why not? afford to live comfortably during a PhD.